Leaders come in different mounting bolt configurations, but basically they all do the same thing. They measure the amount of air traveling through them, apply that to a circular motion on a multipotentiometer, which then sends signals out here. This is an airflow meter for an early style fuel injection, 1975-1976. It's easy to tell because it has seven pins across the contacts. If it has only five pins, it does not have the fuel pump contact in it, so you can't interchange these two types of airflow meters one car to the next. So if your airflow meter has seven pins, replace it with a seven pin contact. Be sure to get the mounting bracket that goes with it because there are ones that only have three bolts that bolt it down and you'll have difficulties getting them to interchange. I'll hold up the other one here now. This is a 11th month of 1982 ZX and I think we can see right here that it only has five pins. And the problem is that this system here opted to use a different type of sensing to shut the fuel pump off when the car was not running. That being that this system here used a switch inside of the, the airflow meter. The ZX uses an oil pressure sensing unit and it's real simple to tell the difference between those two. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now, this is simply an early style airflow meter with the top cover, the black box cover taken off. It's great fun to take stuff apart. These things are very tough to seal back up and keep clean. The only servicing that can be done to these is there is a printed circuit right here on either side and you have a wiper strip that runs across it and it has two very sensitive small copper contacts which wipe across a carbon board and make contacts up to all of these other wires that are being put into here. This simply approximates airflow in here causing uh, the greater, the, the further this goes, the richer the mixture is in, injected, the longer the pulse width time of the injector. Right here, if you can see this, is the micro switch which shuts the fuel pump off. As you can see, in the rest position, this is open. Just as this moves approximately five degrees, that little spring-loaded tab makes contact. These two make contact. So these two wires right here on the first two wires here, are the ones which are, the, are most critical for making sure that fuel pump will run. If you take and disconnect this wire and bridge these two, your fuel pump should run with the key in the on position. So you can test a bad flow meter? That you, you test a bad flow meter simply by disconnecting it, bridging these two with a small wire, and your fuel pump should run in the on position of the ignition. If not, if you do, don't want to have to go to all the trouble to pull this, simply take this air boot off right here, reach in with your finger, and just push this. And your fuel pump should... And your fuel pump should... You should get a buzz each time you push on that. And what year of cars was that? This is 75, 76 only. Okay. 77 and 78 use... Uh, there, many of them will use the same contact. It, they're interchangeable for several years there. I hate to try and give you a specific year that will or will not. If you have seven pins, you have the fuel pump contact built in. Just, just suffice it to leave it at that. Right. If you have the five pin, let's go over to that. If you have the five pin style airflow meter and do not have the micro switch built in, it will be using a different type of oil pressure sending unit that screws into the block just by the oil filter and it has, it looks very similar to this, it has a eighth inch tapered pipe thread fitting in it with a 14 millimeter uh, head a nut on the back here. Don't attempt to twist the body of it, always get a wrench on this to turn it. If you have a five pin, it, this will be two contacts, which will be spade flat blade contacts, much like the uh, contacts you found on the back of the master fuel injection relay. This is a 280Z with a seven pin, and it only has one contact. This one contact's whole job is simply to make your, get your oil pressure gauge read. The second contact that is in the ZX and the late Z styles is one is a grounding switch which opens and closes due to oil pressure which turns on the master fuel injection relays and if you've got that style you'll have split relays if you can it, very simply look under the hood see if you've got power supplies to both sides of the battery if you do look for that long oblong fuel that master fuel injection relay and look for a single pin contact if you don't have any of those correctly installed as it as you are one of these has been, uh, these are incorrectly installed. 
For those of you who had low oil pressure readings in your Z's, that's very normal. This is the early, early Roadster, and it's easy to tell because it had a little 10 millimeter screw on the head of it that uh, held the, the wire on. And this made your gauge read a lot higher. If you want to, you can order this one from Nissan and just ask for the Roadster, the SPL and the SRL 311 uh, oil pressure sitting units, and those will make your gauges read higher. But you can only use that style gauge on a seven pin air flow meter. For those of you with a five pin, this will not work. You said it would make the gauge read higher. Will it still read accurately? Um, none of them read accurately. Oil pressure is oil pressure. <laughs> the oil pump kick out pressure 65 pounds, and I've never seen one yet that didn't have it, unless it was totally lunched, and usually the rods were knocking by then. Yeah. So if you've got this style in here, that, that ground contact is what does the, the job for you. If your fuel pump won't kick on and everything else is working, go in and simply disconnect this and retest it. The fuel pump should run. On the sensor switch? On the sensor thing. switch. If in doubt, disconnect this switch. The, pull it off, and the, the fuel pump should then start up and run. And you're talking about the switch, the switch, the sensor with two pins. With two pins, right. yeah, not with this single bayonet hitting. The, okay. If it has a bayonet end on it, that won't do you any good. Right. But if you've got a seven pin, if you have the seven pin, you reach in like this. If you've got a five pin, you just simply disconnect the oil pressure, and with the key in the off position, obviously, reach over and pull the only wire that you can pull off the alternator easily, which is the plastic connection. Disconnect it from the back of the alternator because it also uses the end terminal of the alternator to close this relay also on the double control relays. So you need, it senses both the alternator output and it also senses the um, oil pressure, the presence of oil pressure to get the fuel pump to run on the cars with five pins. It, when somebody